Well, if you remember, just a few weeks ago, or maybe, uh, I don't know, seven or eight weeks ago, one of the top ten things we did was top ten things you didn't have in the English dictionary um, several years ago. We were talking about, well, actually just a few months ago, we were talking about things like selfies and whatever. And do you know what? Crowdfunding is one of the things that was not in the dictionary. And as luck would have it, I have an expert here in the studio this morning. Good morning to Roscoe Patterson. Very good morning to you, Mike. Um, and welcome along. And I have to say, it was really interesting. We were chatting about this off air. Crowdfunding, nobody knew what it was How? just literally a few years ago. So give us a bit of history about it. Where did it all start? Uh, crowdfunding's only seven sort of years young, and uh, it's gone from... Uh, strength to strength and now daily there's 71 million US raised through crowdfunding platforms globally. Oh, that's a huge amount of yeah, money. Yes, 34 billion a year and it's and it's doubled each year for the last five years. Wow, that, yeah. that's quite amazing. So for people that don't know, what is crowdfunding? Uh, crowdfunding is literally where you put up and communicate your idea, hopefully, very clearly, <laughs> um, online and you essentially... Uh, get people to get behind your project to have the experience of co-creating uh, the product or service that you're launching as a business or as a charity or as a not-for-profit or something like that. Uh, there is also another side to crowdfunding, which is like the charity side. There's donation platforms uh, like GoFundMe and Chuffed and things like that where people, you know, their, their mum gets cancer and they need to raise some money for an operation. Sure. So there's so there's a business application and a personal application. So let's first of all took a look at the, the business side of things. Um, so somebody he wakes up one morning and goes, wow, I've got the best idea. This is fantastic. Oh, hang on a minute. I have no money. Uh, so and you've said yourself, they've got to be clear. I would imagine a lot of people that try this crowdfunding are just not clear on what it is they're trying to achieve. Well, I think that's business in general. I don't know that that's just crowdfunding. <laughs> you're, uh, right. <laughs> you're a psych question when you say to somebody at a networking event, what do you do? And as your eyes glaze over after 10 minutes, you don't know, just get, mate, get to the point. Give me your elevator pitch. Get to the point right now. And I guess it must be the same with crowdfunding because, you know, that Let's face it, that people are being pitched all the time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so you've got to keep it keep it clear. So, so a business or a would-be business has an idea um, and, and they think, yeah, but we need some financial help. Yeah, well, I think the, thing, the first thing is, is they need to um, really break down that financial goal and make it just what they actually need, not some grandiose number that they've plucked out of thin air said, oh, you know, I need a million bajillion dollars. That's, yeah, yeah. that's just unrealistic. But if, 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 say, someone wants to build a building... Um, and and they can get away with building a bare bones version of it for you know forty grand or fifty grand on on a block of land or something they might already own and get a start. Okay. Then they should go for a goal like that versus like the five hundred grand or six hundred grand building they might want to have as a finished product. Um, and so so start with a really low goal, but then communicate what it is you're trying to achieve, and and more importantly, how does that help the person who's getting involved with the campaign? Like. Why, why, would, why do they even care? Exactly. And that was going to be my next question. You know, why, why would people get involved? What is the return on investment? Yeah. Is there any return on investment? Or are they doing it out of the goodness of the heart? Is it a tax loss? How does it work? So there's a few different types of crowdfunding. One's called reward-based, which means uh, essentially like I give you a donation, I get something in return. Yep. So if someone's starting a T-shirt company, they could basically just pre-sell T-shirts. That would be a reward. Uh, donation is I give it out of the kindness of my heart. Uh, equity crowdfunding, not legal in Australia presently. Uh, it is the bill is in Parliament. It's not there yet, but basically uh, we should see it within the next six months. And that means you'll be able to get literally a share in the business, like equity in the business. So okay. you'll be able to donate some funds and get a share in some business. So it'll be the future way that essentially venture capital is raised. But obviously there's a risk involved. So I guess anybody who thinks, yeah, I've got a, a spare few thousand dollars, I, I don't mind crowdfunding. I don't, I, and I would imagine you have to actually... Uh, first of all, believe in the product, the service, the business before you get involved. And I guess it helps if you like the person <laughs> as well, that, you know, because if you don't like them, you ain't going to give them the money money. So. Yeah, for sure. I think, um, you know, products products are, are, are getting to market faster and faster. Like, technologies are being adopted so much quicker on the planet. You know, it took uh, 70 years for the washing machine to have full from early stage adoption through to late stage adoption, uh, whereas, you know, Snapchat, it took, uh, I think it was seven months. Wow. So we, we're really accelerating in the speed at which people adopt things, and I think uh, what will happen when we come to people investing in things like crowdfunding for businesses and, 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 and the evolution is that equity crowdfunding, um, 
you know, we, we will just see tech that will bl- make people's heads spin when it comes to getting involved with people's businesses and buying shares in it and all sorts of different things. So there's cool things and that's not where we're at right now. Where we're at is we've got rewards and donations. Yeah. yeah. So, so what about yourself? Why did you decide this is something you're interested in and, and you know, dare I say, is this a business for you? Yeah, so basically I'm building a, a crowdfunding platform called Gather Change and literally uh, I stumbled across it because of another business I have I did a crowdfunding campaign for. So um, I've got a, a co-working space down on the Tweed, just south of the border, and uh, literally we had a goal of 80 grand and we raised only 42 grand. Okay. Um, so that was interesting in itself, but we were able to raise another $80,000 of in-kind value. So people gave us desks, chairs, air conditioners, people even gave us their time. We just like had the community come out of the woodwork. It was a great way to uh, engage a, a larger audience. Anyway, so there's no crowdfunding platform that takes all of these things, the time, the donation, so that's what I'm building. Um, and okay. so I'm mean, still in the process of building it. It's, it's very early beta. Uh, we've got some cool projects on there already. There's there's a cool one called Business of Hope that's happening right now with a lady in Brisbane who's raising money for homeless people uh, to help them become entrepreneurs and get off the streets. And Fantastic. there's all sorts of cool stuff happening on there, yeah. Which is great. And that leads me on to, to maybe the charity side because, you know, it, yeah. we are bombarded every single day uh, yeah. and every cause is a good cause. And you think, well, where do you start? Where do you stop? If somebody's thinking, oh, we, we could do some help for the charity, what is the key to, to really to, to get so, people involved in this? Charities need to start behaving like businesses. Uh, there's $1.74 trillion globally given to charities, which is a lot of money. That's a lot of money. It is a lot of money. Um, but the social consumer is starting to bite into that cherry. And what I mean by that is is that there's social enterprises emerging, things like thank you water and products where you can buy something and you can be making an impact just by drinking a bottle of water okay. or by wearing the right line of clothing or by buying from the right local supplier. So businesses that uh, businesses want to um, businesses and charities want to behave more like businesses and focus on the social consumer because the philanthropic dollar is is merging with the consumer dollar. And as I say, the problem we have is, and you only need to turn on the news at night. Every single night, there's a worthy yeah. cause. You watch a current affair, you think, "Wow, that poor family." But there's only so much money to go around. Yeah. And again, I, I would imagine now people are a little bit frightened because there are so many scams, and there are, are, are people out there who'll try and rip other people people off how do you know with this crowdfunding if it's genuine or if somebody's really running a bit of a scam so i think i think you know how we're saying having too big a too audacious goal i think that that's what actually makes uh the trust go down in the space of crowdfunding is is when people put a goal out there that's unrealistic um they're better off to go and fund like for example if you're a business and you're a startup and you haven't got any funds and you want to make a line of t-shirts let's say okay um if if you're going to do that then you should go and get some money to run your first 10 t-shirts, not your first 10,000. And your goal should be publicly like 500 bucks. And you should then, when you have a 500 buck goal, go and try and raise five grand and sell 50. Yeah. But put the goal at 10 and step over it easily because it helps, it helps the crowdfunding community because it builds more trust because you deliver on your product, you fulfill on your promises. And so when people don't fulfill on their promises, that's when we get into sticky water yeah. exactly uh, and as I say you know every single day if it's not an email from some bloke in West Africa mm-hmm. that's got 25 million dollars and all you need to do is just give them your bank details and put it straight <laughs> here I, you know I got serious well, I got the, one of them the yesterday crowdfunding websites are pretty safe because I mean they use things like PayPal and Stripe these are all known internet gateways sure. that are trusted um, payment facilities and uh, yeah so you, you've got protection like you do with any bank you know Stripe and PayPal are huge multi-trillion dollar yeah, I think, uh, and I think most people are certainly uh, PayPal if you use uh, eBay or anything yeah, like that yeah. and, and more I've noticed more and more retailers are actually using PayPal yeah. now I think you've got more safety with that than giving you know the guy from Esatonia your uh, bank account <laughs> <laughs> you got that email as well uh, Roscoe it's been fascinating if people want to get a, a hold of you I'm guessing you have a Facebook page uh, yeah facebook.com forward slash uh, gather change Okay, so gather change. That's under you know two two meanings of that. Gather change, yep. change no, as money. Yep. Uh, and and what about a website? If uh, Gatherchange dot com is where people can find. Nice us. and easy. That's fantastic. Really, really interesting. And I wish you luck with your business. I think it's a great idea. And also, you know, we we here we we chatted to somebody a few months ago about pay it forward. Mm-hmm. And a lot of this is, you know, what if you want to feel good about yourself, help somebody else to get a yeah. leg up in business, which I think is great. Or even from a charity perspective as well. Completely. And I think. Uh, 
it, people just need to jump in and have a try with something small and have fun with it. That sounds great. Roscoe Patterson, if you want to know a little bit more, we can give you uh, Roscoe's details. We'll get him to leave uh, all of his information with the rain and reception. So give us a shout here at 101FM on 3808 1101.